So as we look out around us and we uh, see everything changing, planets lining up in the sky, and in particular, the sun has now moved on into gateway number 51. So we're still in the sign of Aries astrologically. And we've come past in the Northern Hemisphere, our spring equinox, we're beginning to see sensations of spring and things beginning to change, sprout perhaps. In the Southern Hemisphere, the fall and harvest time and other things taking place, change of seasons. And now the sun has gone on into gateway number 51, the gateway we call arousing. We also call it the gateway of shock. And in life, it happens every now and again, something comes out of the blue and it's like, oh my goodness, you know, that's shocking. People can have this 51 in their design and they will find, you know, there's a couple of things happen in their life. Some of the things that they deliver into other people's lives that can come across as a real shock. Or they can be in this situation in life where part of their learning curve is to understand how to deal with constant shocking situations in the world until they become really wise and actually expert at dealing with shocking situations. So all of us have this as a potential in our life and a great opportunity with anything that comes as a shock in our life. Wake up, right? If you've ever been in a house where the lightning or a thunderstorm comes past and the lightning hits the house or hits a tree in the garden or hits something really close by, and it's lightning, brings a massive bolt of bright, shocking light, electricity charge. And at the same time, if it's right on the house or right nearby, bang, you get the thunderclap as well. And that's exactly what the 51 is all about. When you look at the uh, hexagram, we've still got solid, broken, broken in the bottom trigram. But here we've got one of these doubles. We've got the same thing on the bottom, same thing on the top. So it's the double thunderclap in a way. And it's the gateway of the arousing, the big wake up, right? That's what it's all about. So what happens in life? You know, sometimes something happens to us. We get sick. We get fired. We get in an accident. Somebody says something to us and it completely shifts our whole perspective in life. And there it is. That's what the 51 is all about. It's like every now and again, something happens that just shifts the whole gestalt, that shifts the whole program. We're bumbling along in life and all of a sudden, oh, everything's changed. And in that moment, we have an opportunity to re-experience our innocence. And so the other end of the channel, the potential channel ending is gateway number 25, which we looked at recently as the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, the fall equinox in the southern hemisphere. And the channel, the 5125, is this channel that we call initiation. Initiation, it takes us out of a set pattern. It's boosted from the willpower center. The energy comes out of the willpower center, gate 51, and it flashes across to gateway number 25. So bumbling along, same old, same old, and all of a sudden there's this shock. And all of a sudden we're in a completely different space in our life. We have that possibility to be innocent. I have no idea what I'm supposed to do in this situation. All the programs I've had about life, they don't work in this moment. Can I find that truth inside myself? Can I step forward into something completely different? Can I be initiated into recognizing something that's essential for me? So I've always said to people, when I come across a chart and they've got the 51 on its own in their chart, I say, yeah, you can be really shocking. You can really shock people. And at the same time, you have to learn how to deal with shocking situations in your life, like being really good at handling complete shifts, complete changes. Where did that come from? And so for those that have the 51 and in the shocking mode, and they have to use it judiciously. And I say always, you know, according to your type and authority, use that energy. But I call it the lion or the lioness's roar. You could be listening to somebody going on and on and on about something, and it's like, my goodness, you know, I'm going to sleep listening. They're boring me to death. And all of a sudden, the lion or the lioness comes out with this, Rah! I've had it with this nonsense. Tell me something different. Wake up, for goodness sake. 
And the person on the receiving end says, oh, they were so nice. And all of a sudden they're shouting at me. And it just, the 51 has that effect. It breaks people out of a rut. It breaks us all out of a rut. And so in the time where the sun is going through the 51, get ready. There may be something coming into your life that's just going to reinvigorate you, put you on a different track, take you out of the tried and true and the same old droning approach to life. So we call it the gate of arousing, gate of shock. We relate it to gall. And in the body, you know, we have this gallbladder. And the gallbladder, really, when it, when it fires, when it releases some gall, it's like, whoa. All of a sudden, there's a massive shift in internal energy. And that gall can be projected outwards as well. So individual initiative, right? With this 51 is the launching pad for initiative, for new possibilities, new engagements with life. Individual initiative acts in relation to disruption, rearrangement, and drastic changes, right? There's no going back once you've had that initiation, once you've stepped into that other possibility in life. And so, you know, you might say about the 51, it's very much to do with the shaman or the witch doctor or the guru or the wise one who sees a way to open up another possibility in somebody's life. They're droning on, they can't see anything, their perspective is limited, and the 51 all of a sudden just blows everything open. So whether it comes through somebody or whether it comes through a planetary interaction in the 51, this is the nature of it all. This is what's going on here. So let's have a look at the commentary for this. And it says, thunder is the shock wave that rattles the heavens, rattles everything, and shakes us awake. Right, that's the whole point about the 51. You're in a slightly dormant mode and all of a sudden, shock, something happens. It wakens us to appreciate there are sometimes forgotten forces at play. Right, we just think, well, life's on a, I'm just coasting along here. And the 51 says, okay, get ready, something's gonna change. And alternative possibilities in life that can be tried. All of a sudden, there's a whole new pathway. All of a sudden, there's a completely different way of engaging your life. Somebody dies. All of a sudden, there's a whole gap in your life. There's a whole opening of things. There's a reminder, you know, what did they bring into your life? You have a sudden shock. Your, your horse wins the race, you know, and you get, you get a huge return on that. Shocking, you weren't expecting it. Who knows? All kinds of different things can happen. Something you had a lot of trust in, all of a sudden you find out it's not working anymore. What do you do about it? Do you fold, do you collapse, or do you just see, okay, one door has shut on me, let's see if we can find another door that's going to open up. So the 51 just comes in this very, very dramatic fashion. A bolt out of the blue makes it possible in any moment to transcend ego separation and jump into personally truthful reality. That's the whole thing about a shock. You just have that possibility of seeing things all over again, but in a completely different framework by re-engaging with one's own purely innocent nature. That's what the 51 does. It takes us into that space. So let's have a look through the lines. And always with the lines, we start with the first line, which is the foundation of the hexagram. It's at the top of the list here, but actually we're talking about the line right at the bottom, the bottom chop mark there, which is a solid line in this case. And it says arousing, growing through disruptions of all kinds. Right? So sooner or later in life, we're going to get a shock. Something's going to startle us. You know, it could be a loud noise. It can be a flash of something. And all of a sudden, we're getting to see, right, let's have a look at this. So it says growing through disruptions of all kinds. And that is basically always we have this chance to be initiated into a reacquaintance with our innocent nature, right? Without all the complications, without all the things we're used to having, without all the knowledge and things we've been told about life. We literally get the shamanic blast, the initiation into a completely different view of ourself in our life. Dramatic change can be alarming until you accept all the transformations that it brings. We're not here for a static life. We're not here just to follow along with whatever it is that we're told to do. 
we're here to be disrupted every now and again. And what do we do in that moment? Do we complain about it and say, oh my goodness, life is so unkind? Or do we say, hang on a bit, here's an opportunity to grow, to expand, to be more creative in my presence here. Transformation is your nature and you find a relative ease adapting to dramatic situations. Right? Okay, here we go again. No biggie. Let's see what we can manage with this particular disruption. To the point where you can actually get really good at handling disruptions. You know, crisis control. All the time. You're just on it. You see, okay, let's steer things in a different way. And on the other side of it, you're very sensitive to shocks and the upsets that they bring, often wishing to avoid them. Right? Hedging your bets. Like, yeah, I can see it's this one's going to come. I'll just do something different here. I'll just kind of sidestep if I can and miss out potentially on the possibility to grow quite dramatically. Out of all the channels in the human design system, this particular channel is truly disruptive in the sense that it can expand our life into something really amazing if we allow it to do that. Second line. The second line is called surviving, recognizing temporary upsets for what they are. Temporary, right? It's a shock. It doesn't mean the end of the world necessarily. Who knows? It might be one day. But right now, it's just, okay, we'll get through this. Disruption. Something massive has changed in life. We'll find a way through. Everything comes around. And if you wait patiently, you transcend shock and apparent defeat. If everything's gone wrong and you can't find a way through it, it's just, say, be patient. It'll come around. All of a sudden, you'll see the consequence or the openings or the possibilities or the life's lessons from the disruptions that take place. The one side of it, you confidently take well-timed evasive action in overwhelming situations, right? You know when to jump. You know when you're just likely to get completely flattened by something and you make take evasive actions. Or the other side of it, mental indecision will often cause you to miss the right time to act in shocking situations, that you're so caught up in something, you're tro focused on trying to find an old solution or there must be some way to deal with this thing rather than just sort of sidestepping it and just seeing, I'm going to get flattened anyhow. I might as well just get out of the way of this thing. But yeah, one can overthink things. One can just say, I'm doomed. It's done, I'm done for. It's just too much. I can't cope. And the second line always has that possibility. And it does that by wanting to borrow from other people's input. And just to realize we all have our own truth, our own way of engaging in life. And again, we're talking type and authority and your human design. Engaging in life on your own terms, in your own way, according to your own design. And sure enough, you will survive. You'll come through. But there's always that inclination that, oh, I should know how to deal with this instead of less acting from our own authority. The third line being composed, learning to honor the laws of nature. Nature is very good at delivering shocks, you know, in the weather in particular, and in other ways as well. It's, uh, you know, something can change overnight, whether it's uh, we can see it align with nature or we just see, well, my goodness, this was coming anyhow. Cosmic event, something or other. And the whole thing is, OK, this too will pass. It'll come. We'll work our way through this. But it's just about honoring the laws of nature. Nature has her own pattern her own timing. Everything runs in cycles. I mean, we look particularly to the movements of the planets around us to see what are the seasons. And within those seasons, naturally, there are all kinds of things that begin, they come to a conclusion, they wrap it up, and other things open up as a result. So third line always has this potential to be the first one into any situation, to experiment with it, to experiment with the shock, and to just see, okay, I get to find out I can actually manage these things very well. In times of shock, you either grow through calmly realigning with the inherent changes or not. And out of all the six lines, the third line is brilliant at realignment, adapting. Right? It's just this didn't work so well, so let's try another way. So in terms of crisis management, over time can be really, really competent and capable. Here, the, the power to deal with disruption depends on your ability to calmly find a way through it. Right? You know when you get a massive shock, like a bang goes off around you, 
what do you do? Do you jump out of your skin or do you just see, okay, I'm in the flow of things here. I can see how I'm to proceed here. I know when to duck. I know when to put my head up. I know when to make a move through this. The other side of it, you may take shocks as a personal affront to your ego that compels you to struggle with life. Now, we bring in the word ego because we are here in the willpower center. And the willpower center is very much about what do we want out of life, what it is that has value in life. Are we here to grow or are we here just to follow somebody else's dictate of what life's all about? If we're here to grow, then the 51 is very much a component part of that ability to make massive jumps all of a sudden, to take charge of situations, to be active within what we're saying here, the laws of nature, the laws of the shock that can come every now and again. So personal affront, yeah, when we take a personal affront to a shock, it's somehow or other we're too caught up in some kind of an agenda within ourselves. It's supposed to be like this. And the whole nature of the 51 and the shock is it takes us out of the tried and true, out of the regular mundane way of doing things and shocks us into a completely different experience of what it is that's going on what it is that's possible for us. So there it is. You know, the third line has to see, can you grow by calmly realigning, by adapting to whatever the shock situation is? Or do you just say, wow, it's all too much and, you know, life shouldn't be dealing with this kind of situation. We get to the fourth line, and the fourth line is kind of an echo of the first line. The first line was very much about, you know, being available to, learn how to deal with shock situations. And the fourth line says it's being unstructured. So here the thing is, the bolt out of the blue, you know, we might have an idea which way the bolt's coming or what's going to be the likely result of it, but the fourth line has this degree of flexibility, this possibility of being unstructured in terms of what's going to happen here. And it says beyond habitual reactions, going outside the box, and you'll find, you know, in the in the services in the planet, people that are committed to uh, EMTs, uh, fire brigade, police, dealing with shocking situations all the time. And sometimes they just have to see, I've got to reinvent the whole thing here. I've never, this isn't in the manual, this particular shock situation. We've got to go about this in an unstructured way. And the fourth line is gathering people together or having that influence in other people. Hey, We've got to go outside the box here. Are you with me? Can you see? Can you see the old rules are not going to apply here? Dramatic times bring opportunities that you either grasp or fumble. <laughs> Isn't that the case? You know, are we ready to make that jump? Are we ready for that initiation, that movement into something completely different? Or we just kind of fumble it and, oh, goodness, yeah, it didn't work out. I'm distressed. And here we bring out Uranus and it says your spiritual warrior nature is thrilled by shocking events and takes on all challenges, right? I don't necessarily have that in my makeup, but I know people that have this quality in theirs. You know, they welcome a challenge. They welcome a shocking event. And very often they'll, they'll find themselves in an environment where they're dealing with shock situations all the time and reinventing whatever it is that needs to happen here. I mean, the Western medical system, for example, you know, it's in, certainly in America, it's always been based on a battlefield, you know, giving resuscitation to people who've been wounded in war situations and fighting situations. And slowly, slowly it's morphed into something a little bit different. And so there's all kinds of alternative ways of looking at what happens when somebody succumbs to an illness or a shock in some way injures them. And so here it is, you know, taking on all challenges and we'll just see, let's constantly look for ways through this, how to bring about a better situation in terms of whatever the shock was that initiated us in the first place. The other side of it, trying to master intense drama and shock with old mental programs will cause chaos, right? This is about going outside of, we haven't had this situation, we're totally shocked. How do we deal with this? All of a sudden there's a flood. What are we going to do? You know, we're going to stand on the roof of the house and hope somebody comes and lifts us off it. There's all kinds of different ways in which shock and crisis situations are met in the world. And the fourth line is really about 
bringing people together to see, okay, we've got to modify our approaches, constantly stay up to date. The fifth line, being reliable, accepting all the changes that repeated shocks bring. And that's just a fifth line principle. It's that ability to look over the fence, to look beyond, to have the imaginative quality to see these are the ways in which we can engage with the shocking situation. This is what we can see on the other side of it. And so the whole thing in the end is accepting the changes that repeated shocks bring. It's just seeing everything moves on in time. We're not stuck in a particular way. I mean, you'll just see the acceleration in technology and people's approach to the disasters in the world. It's constantly morphing. People that never had a major disaster in their life, all of a sudden they've got one right on their doorstep. And so the fifth line just says, okay, we can find our way through this, but we've got to modify our approaches to it. You reach your goals by following your inner guidance through all manner of disruptions. Remember about fifth lines, there's always that potential distraction from other people. Oh, you're supposed to do this and you've got to do that and we need you to do this. And what this fifth line is saying, look, I've got to stay with my inner truth here. I can see what's going on. I can recognize what's going on. And, you know, this is what this is how I'm going to engage with it, according to my own inner truth. So you have the inner strength to find your own and others' truth in all extreme situations. What, what are others' truth? What do they need? They've got a shocking situation going on. It's not like just here, oh, here's a blanket provision for everybody. Individual people have individual concerns. And this... 51 Gateway is absolutely about empowering the individual. Yeah, a shock comes or a shock is delivered. It's all about empowerment for who we are and what our life is all about. The other side here, you may become engaged with fixing disruptions that you lose track of your own journey. I do, you're just constantly on call. Oh, I'll fix it here, fix it there. And you're always involved in everybody else's chaos and to the point that you lose track of what's going on in your own life. I mean, they always say, but, you know, the mechanic's car is the one that needs the most attention sometimes because the mechanic's always dealing with everybody else's stuff. And the fifth line has that capability of just constantly on call, sorting out everybody else's issues. They're good at it by all means. But what it's saying is following your own inner guidance is what's really important here. And we come to the sixth line. The line is called regenerating. The phoenix rises from the ashes anew. So when there's a big disaster, a big shock, you know, all of a sudden a flood comes in and everything's washed away or a tornado comes through and there's nothing left except sticks and stones. And the fifth, sixth line just says, OK, we'll rebuild. We'll get it all back together again. Yes, we got everything taken out from underneath us, but we can put that energy back in. We can recoup. We can recover from all this. Shock brings you dramatic shifts from old accords, beliefs, and understandings to new ones. It breaks us out of a knowledge base. A shock breaks us out of a rule book. It breaks us out of a belief system. All of a sudden, boom, everything changes. And so the sixth line just says, okay, we, we can regenerate, but the phoenix is going to rise from the ashes in a very, very different way than it crashed. And so there it is, breaking out of old accords, old beliefs, fossilized systems, into something very different. Yes, we'll rebuild, but we'll rebuild in a very different and novel way. The shock has told us we cannot go back to where we were. Your nature is to endure, grow, and even flourish through all forms of intense challenges. And there it is. None of us are spared from shocks in this lifetime. The great thing is what we're going to do about it. Are we going to raise our consciousness? Or are we going to just complain about everything and just say, I'm done for, it's a hopeless situation? You see, in the end, life is always an opportunity to create purpose. And there it is. Are we creating purpose here? I don't know what your purpose is going to be, but it is in accord with your nature, with your design, with your life. It can come through so many different things. It's like none of us are without gifts and so a shock can be a huge springboard into something very, very different in our life. So here it is. It's saying your nature is to endure, grow, and even flourish through all kinds of challenges, intense challenges. Yeah, make no mistake about it. The 51 is intense. 
And the other side of it, you identify with great disruptions and disasters, often in life or death situations or circumstances. And yeah, there are some people, they're absolutely on the line all the time. They'll just see my job is to rebuild. People get smashed down. I bring them back up. I guarantee this is a lot of the energy in hospitals and places, in trauma units, where people are just suddenly, you know, their whole life is disrupted in a massive way. And the sixth line just says, okay, we can rebuild. We'll get you back together again. We'll get you back on your feet. We'll rehabilitate you. But you're not going to go back to where you were. Your consciousness has had to shift as a result of this. You cannot maintain the same old habits that you had before. Everything has changed. Get with it. Step up. New challenges. Step up. Be creative. Raise the consciousness. And there it is, the 51. However, that comes into our life for these few days. The sun will be in the 51. And just count on it. Something's going to come about. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to run for the woods? Are you going to just see, okay, what's my style here? How do I play within this? How do I grow in all of this? And there it is. That's the challenge for all of us. Remember the potential for a massive initiation into a completely different experience of life. And there we are. Let's leave it there.